Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Blue Golf Ball here today with a Pokemon video. It's not going to be a Pokemon TCG video, but it is going to be a Pokemon video nonetheless. I'm going to be doing my top 32 real Pokemon, uh, Pokemon in real life. And so this is going to be a fun little video. I'm going to run down my top list of Pokemon that have direct real life inspirations or relationships. And at number one, we have Charmander, everyone's favorite starting Pokemon. I know there's a few of you guys that, that like to use Squirtle or perhaps even Bulbasaur, but the majority, we all like Charmander because Charmander is a Salamander and uh, becomes Charizard, of course. But uh, the Pokemon that relates most to, uh, I would say, right, to Charmander is the giant Chinese Salamander. And you can see here the giant Chinese Salamander. Sometimes you can see photos where they're red and that looks a lot more like the Charmander. But uh, you can see there's some relationships here, right? It's a Salamander. It's huge. Uh, I don't know. I mean... It, Looks kind of like a ditto version of Trimander. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but hey, that's number one to start off this list. At number two, we have Poliwag. And uh, Poliwag is, uh, you know, of course, it's a tadpole. And uh, Poliwag, you can see it's got these swirls here, right? And, and you can, you know, you can read up about it. It's supposed to be the intestines. And so there's actually a little more closely related tadpole to it. It's the translucent tadpoles. And these translucent tadpoles do have the swirls, and it is their intestines. And that's kind of interesting. You can see maybe there's some inspiration there for that. At number three, we have Gorbis and Hunttail at number four. So three and four together here. And you can see Gorbis has got a long nose looking thing. And uh, Hunttail is, is kind of a, a snake looking type Pokemon. And so the real life animal that Gorbis is based off of, I would say, is the long nose Chimera. And you can see a lot of similarities there. Even the shape and the way that it's got a long nose. <laughs> it looks a lot like Gorbis. And for the hunt tail, you can see here the oarfish looks a lot like uh, hunt tail. It's got the, you know, this, it's kind of a snake kind of thing. Lives in the ocean. Really long. It's got sharp teeth. I don't know. Looks kind of scary. And it's a little bit of a legendary kind of uh, animal too. It's kind of hard to find, kind of hard to spot, and that's kind of neat. Anyways, at number five, we have Caterpie, and uh, yes, everybody loves the days when Caterpie was with Ash and then eventually evolved to Butterfree and had to leave, but you guys all know this, and you guys may have seen this before around the internet. Caterpie is based on the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Caterpillar. Try to say that 10 times backwards. And you can see a lot of the similarities and the green color scheme, everything to the antenna looking thing. I'm not sure what that is. But uh, yeah, that is Caterpie straight up. And I would say that they did a great job uh, referencing that. So uh, number six, we can't exactly mention Caterpie without mentioning Metapod. And uh, Metapod here is <laughs> Metapod use Harden. Oh man, how sad. Um, uh, yeah, the Metapod is the Purus Rappe Pupa, and uh, basically it's a pod. Uh, but since we were mentioning Metapod, at number seven we have Kakuna and Hakuna Matata. And uh, yes, the Kakuna is uh, the stage one of the stage two line Beedrill. And uh, you can see here the, you know, the real relationship to Kakuna would be, of course, a bee pupa. And here you see it in this image here. Those things look creepy. And they look exactly like Kakunas. And they will become hornets someday. I don't know, some kind of bees. Uh, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, ooh, not in my house. Anyways, at number eight, we have uh, Pidgey. And, oh, Pidgey's such a cute little Pokemon. Everybody loves catching it, you know, back in Generation 1 days on the Game Boy. Uh, but, of course, it has a real-life Pokemon that I'd say is really closely related. It is the Cedar Waxing. You can see right there the eyes, right on their eyes, there's that, you know, kind of the black, uh, like, headband kind of thing. Almost like a raccoon. I don't know. <laughs> and so, it's a, okay, fine. It's a bird. They look alike, okay? All right. I, I think they look alike. So, uh, at number nine, we have Love Disc, which is based on... Uh, the Kissing Gorami, right? Love disc right here. It's got, it's shaped like a heart. And you can see here the Kissing Gorami is kissing around, right? Uh, looks like it's shaped like a heart as well. And it's kind of, kind of the same color scheme, uh, I suppose. At number 10, we have Mudkip. And, uh, Mudkip, everybody, a lot of people like to start with Mudkip. It's one of those starters that people just thought, oh yeah, this, this is nice. Mudkip's a nice Pokemon. Uh, Mudkip is based on the Axolotl. It's a interesting looking alien like thing. Uh, but, I mean, you look closely at the, the face and kind of the way, I don't know, it's water type too. I mean, animals are, yeah. All right. 
you know, it looks alike. It looks a little alien, but hey, it'll do. At number 11, we have Magikarp, and Magikarp is one of the most epic Pokemon. Everyone always talks about how sucky Magikarp is, but hey, you know, one day we become a Gyarados, right? You never know your potential. And Magikarp is the yellow rockfish. A lot of you guys may have seen this on the internet already, and uh, man, but I gotta just throw it in this list right here at number 11. The yellow rockfish looks exactly like Magikarp, and legend has it if a Magikarp can swim all the way up a waterfall, at the end of the waterfall when it gets to the top, it becomes a Gyarados. So maybe all you need to do is train a yellow rockfish and we can see a Gyarados someday. At number 12, we have Crocodile. Uh, every time I think of this Pokemon, I think of Crocodile, Crocodile from One Piece. You know, the guy that's uh, Sandman kind of guy. Anyways, number 12, uh, Crocodile. You can see there's a long snout and stuff like that. The Pokemon, or the real-life animal that this Pokemon is based off of is Gariel. G-H-A-R-I-A-L. You can see right here, it's got the long snout, and it's really big. It's a crocodile. It's in the crocodile family, but it's a particular type of crocodile, so that's kind of cool. At number 13, we have Viloplume, and uh, yeah, it's a big plant. What else can I say about it? I mean, it's got, you know, the, the color scheme and everything there. Uh, and so, you know, for a specific kind of plant that matches it, it's going to be the Raflacea Arnadol. I can't pronounce it. But you can see right there on the screen, and yes, there is a lot of similarities. You can see how it's red, it's uh, it's big, and it's a plant. All right, <laughs> number 14, Chatats. Oh, yes, this is a great, this is another bird along with the Pidgey. And uh, it's pretty obvious Chatats going to be some kind of uh, parrot, like, um, you know, animal uh, bird. And uh, yes, it's the yellow-collared lovebirds at number 14. The yellow-collared lovebirds, uh, they do look like Chatats. The color scheme, not so much. I mean, it... it I, I, okay, fine. Just it's a parrot. All right. Uh, number fifteen, uh, Victory Bell is a pitcher plant, and uh, you can see here Victory Bell uh, doesn't really like James, but uh, yeah, it is the pitcher plant. You can see here in, uh, how there's some similarities with the grass uh, right over the mouth. Right, they both got mouths. They eat stuff. It's a plant, and there you go. At number sixteen, we have Sand Shrew. And Sandshrew is one of those Pokemon where you could either go with a Sandshrew, but most people go with a Diglett to take on Lieutenant Surge since, you know, they're ground types and electric types won't work on them. But Sandshrew here, you can see it's the four-banded armadillo, and uh, they do roll up the balls, and they do kind of look alike a little bit. And that's it. We're at the halfway point, and here we are at number 17. If we mention Sandshrew, we got to mention Sand Slash. And Sand Slash here is a pretty cool-looking guy. It's got, you know, spikes everywhere. What other animal in real life looks like that is the pangolin. I cannot pronounce that. Pangolin? I'm not sure. And you can see right there, it's it's kind of walks kind of creepy. I don't know. And it's always ooh, looking for prey. Kind of scary looking. All the spikes. Don't want to mess with that guy. At number 18, we have Drowsy. And uh, <laughs> my, my wife was never a fan of Drowsy. And, uh, you know, it, it, especially when it evolves, you know, they eat dreams and whatnot, you know, into a hypno. And uh, you can see here, Drowsy may have some real-life inspirations from the Malian Taper. Tap, tapper, I don't know. But ugh, those, those things look nasty. Uh, that was my, my wife's first reaction to it. Uh, but I would have to agree. They, <laughs> and so, it, but you definitely can see how there's, you know, it looks like a Drowsy. And maybe Drowsy is based on this kind of animal. I'm not too sure. Uh, at number 19, we have Shellos, and uh, it's based on the uh, Chromodorus Loki. Um, you can see Shellos here definitely looks like it. There's some similarities here. And uh, I don't know, it's uh, crawling around. Uh, I don't know, same thing as a Shellos. So there you have it. At number 20, we have Stunfisk. And uh, yeah. Looks like Silence having fun spinning Stunfisk around. Uh, poor Stunfisk. Uh, enough of that. Uh, Stunfisk is the Stargazer. You guys may have seen this in other posts and forums out there, but it looks ugly. Oh, my goodness. Uh, don't want to step on that thing. But you can see there's some inspirations for it, especially with, you know, it's being, it, it looks brown. It lives in the ocean. You know, Stunfisk can be kind of a water type thing too anyways uh let's go on to number 21 and we have the sea king is or sea king uh, that reminds me of one piece again sea kings but um yes sea king you can see here it looks closely related to 
the Calico Ryukin Goldfish. And wow, are they just a split image of each other. Uh, man, you might as well just, I don't know, uh, catch one of these and, and make it learn some, you know, make it learn how to tackle. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, since we're still on some of these water Pokemon type things, at number 22, we have Starmie. And, uh, you know, Misty Starmie is the most classic one. Everybody loves Starmie. Um, you can see here it's closely related to the Purple Sunstar. And uh, the Purple Sunstar is, uh, it's got a lot of arms. And it's kind of similar to Starmie, how it's not a typical starfish where it only have five. But again, the color, it's purple and it's got a lot of arms. So there you go. At number 23, uh, Go Goat here uh, is, you know, you might think it looks like a, any old ram. You know, it could be any kind of goat. But it's got a particular and a little more specific uh, realistic animal. And it's the Japanese Ciro. And wow, you can look at that. They look a lot alike. And that's a ton of fun just to see uh, how, you know. And it's Japanese. So you can see if you live in Japan, that's where Pokemon's from. You can see these guys maybe in your own backyard. I'm not sure. At number 24, we have Pikachu, everyone's beloved poster child of Pokemon. And uh, Pikachu here is the little lightning Pokemon. And, uh, I mean, you guys all know this. Pika is, you know, mouse, Chu is, or Pika is actually like electricity, and Chu is actually the, the, the sound that uh, a mouse makes. And so what Pikachu is is a Pika. And here we go. You can see it's the little mouse. And uh, I'm not sure, right? That's what they call them. But uh, you can look up, make, maybe research this, and uh, I don't know. But, hey, it looks cute, right? So at number 25, we have Emolga. And once again, since Pokemon is from Japan, uh, you maybe you can guess it. What we have is the Japanese Flying Squirrels. And if you are in Japan, you can see these right outside your window. I'm just kidding. But you can see there's some, you know, direct relationships. Uh, Emolga is a flying-type squirrel, and uh, these Japanese Flying Squirrels are flying squirrels. <laughs> and they're really cute. So there you go. Um that's why it's in Mul it's in a mogul. At 26, we have the uh, Zigzagoon, and uh, uh, no one likes the <laughs> no one really likes this guy. Uh, but of course, we, we you know this has a real life uh, animal, and it's gonna be the Tanuki. And uh, you can see right there, they yeah, I mean it, it's like a dog uh, looking raccoon thing. At number 27, we have Mankey. And uh, Mankey is obviously a monkey, and uh, it fights, but uh, there are some monkeys that look a little bit more like Mankey than others, right? You ain't going to put a gorilla in the picture. And it's the Japanese M-A-C-A-Q-U-E. You can see right there in the video, and the Japanese Makaku. Makaku. Uh, yeah, I mean... Looks like a man key to me, right? If there was ever, if there really was a man key, it's got to evolve into a primate, though. Um, <laughs> all right, twenty-eight. We have Ursaring, and again, we are on a Japan road trip here. Ur Ursaring, it's a big bear. It's brown. It's got this thing on its chest. What other bears like that? Well, hey, there is an Asian black bear. Perhaps you can see these in Japan as well. You can see right there. They have the little white patch on their chest and. Um, I would say that's probably where Ursaring got the inspiration from. Who knows? Maybe. I think so. I, I think so. And at number 29, it is Kyogre. Everybody loves Kyogre. I don't have Groudon in here. Maybe I should, but... Uh, Kyogre is this big Pokemon, but you can see in this video, obviously he's not that big, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a whale shark, right? So here we go. It's a whale shark. You can see, uh, you know, Kyogre, the whale shark, very similar uh, big Pokemon, big animal, lives in the sea, very scary. Don't want to approach it. Um, could get eaten by that thing. At number 30, we have Unfazant. And uh, it, obviously how it sounds, it's a, a pheasant. And uh, you can see right here, it is a Japanese pheasant. And the Japanese pheasant, uh, again, you can find these in Japan. <laughs> I, I got to say, the creators of Pokemon probably started to think, hmm, what are some Pokemon we can see in our backyard? And hey, look, a go-goat and uh, a bear and look, a pheasant. All right, these look good. And they took pictures and then they just made them into Pokemon. At number 31, we have Kabuto. And uh, not the Kabuto from Pokemon. Uh, or not the Kabuto from <laughs> Naruto, I mean. Uh, Kabuto is the giant isopod 
or uh, Atlantic horseshoe crab, uh, either or. But you can see right here, um, I think uh, the horseshoe crab looks a little bit more like a kabuto to me. And uh, see how this horseshoe crab is crawling around. That's kind of cool. And finally, wrapping up this list at number 32. And you guys all are big fans of the Helix fossil. Um, it's going to be Ammonite. And uh, Ammonite is from the Ammonite fossil. Oh, go figure. And there it is, the Ammonite fossil. So that's it for my top 32. Of course, there's plenty of other Pokemon out there that have real-life relationships with uh, real Pokemon and uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, post a comment below, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, this is mostly about TCG, but uh, you guys give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.